Uh, good deal. Well, we'll we're going to go to one of the other authors then. Um, let's go with uh, da, 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 da. Morgan. How do you, how are you feeling right now? Are you ready? I knew you was going to do that. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Tag on me. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, do me a favor. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Tell them about the book you're going to be reading from. And the question I always ask, which is always interesting to hear, is what inspired you to become an author? Okay. Um, well, my name is Morgan Reese. Um, I'm 49 years old. I have three adult children, 31. My son will be 30 on Christmas. I have a 25-year-old. And I have three grandkids. Um, I am a survivor of life's journey. I'm a survivor of my life's journey. Uh, I'm a survivor of four-time sexual assault survivor. I'm a survivor of emotional abuse, mental abuse, domestic violence, child child abuse. Um, and I am grateful by God's grace that I am still here. And I was able to be the person that I am today regardless of everything that I've been through. I've been told a lot that um, I lived a, I lived a, enough lives to last me 10 lifetimes. So that means I'm going I'm to live a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm going to live a long, long time with God's grace. Um, the title of my book that I'm going to be reading from today is Endurance is Victory. And uh, basically it will be depicting some of the things, that, of the things that I went through in my journey of life from, the, from birth until now. I'm actually going to be working on a second book once the final part of my chapter comes to where I need to be. There'll be a part two. What prompted me or inspired me to be an author, and I didn't even think I was going to actually be an author. I actually wrote, started writing my book about 10 years ago. And it was only because I was going through things with my ex-husband at the time. And um, his, my mother-in-law, she told me to stop calling her my ex, but my mother-in-law... <laughs> I was, he would always call her for a lot of different things. And I kind of had a moment and I was like, no, you need to stop listening to him. You need to just tell him to be a man and take care of his family, blah, blah, blah. And she said, oh my goodness, I keep been through a lot. And I just kind of went in and she said, you need to go to counseling. And I was like, no, I'm not going to counseling. You just need to get your son right. I did this before, I'm not going to counseling anymore. And so I actually went. And when I went, my counselor, um, it was a rape crisis counselor. And she said, you need to write a book. She said, it's going to help you heal. I said, write a book. I don't I can write no book. And she said, yeah, you should do that. And so I went home and just started writing. And every so often, every year, I would pick it up, put it back down, pick it up, write some more stuff, put it back down because of the content. And believe it or not, uh, COVID is what pushed me to to publish my to get my book published. Because for years, everyone kept saying, oh, you need it. When you going to finish that book? You've been talking about that book forever. My fiance kept saying, you want to finish that book? I'm like, oh, y'all still remember the book? Oh, uh, okay. So COVID hit. I guess something hit in me. And here I am with the book. And it was, I guess it was my confirmation because when President Biden was elected, the poetress was speaking about endurance. We have overcame. Mm -hmm. We are victorious. We have overcame. And I said, oh, she's talking about my book. So here I am. Wow. Wow. That's a, that's an incredible story. Um, and, you know, I know you and I spoke earlier. I, I, I always applaud women, that, the women and men, because we've had men that come on to do the same thing, that actually uh, make themselves vulnerable in their writing. Uh, that's something that Laquita and I uh, talk about quite often. Melanie and I talk about quite often. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you can actually pour your everything into this book, uh, you know, and make people feel, um, you know, make people feel a certain way, um, release. I think it's also a, a therapeutic uh, yes. for you to actually do that. So, no, I, I definitely commend you. I definitely commend you. I thank God that you were able to, uh, you know, make it through. But look, I'm not going to keep talking. Um, like I said, I know that you are looking to, um, you're, you're looking to perform to a track. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. That's uh, my whole, um, my prayer to, to God is that I want this on screen. I want it okay. on 
um, hearing the words is different than seeing the actual words be put on on screen. Because you can read, you can hear the words. You're like, oh my gosh, I wonder what that looked like. I wonder what that, how that was, how that felt. I agree. I and agree. I agree. Oh, in my prayer from the day that I started writing this a long time ago, I said, you know what? I want this in the movie somewhere. I want it on screen. Mm -hmm. So you can be able to put the visualiza visualization to the wording that was in the book. Because I always cool. say, the book, sometimes the book is good, and then sometimes the, the, the movies are better. You have some books mm -hmm. that are, see the movie, and you're like, oh, that was crap. And then you see a movie, <laughs> like, oh, I'd rather really read the book. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, cool. Well, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further any further ado, I introduce to you Morgan Reese. Thank you guys again. I really appreciate your time. And so blessed. Every time I asked my mother about my daddy, Richard, I was told by my mother that she did not know and that she did not care that he was a drug dealer and that he stayed in and out of jail and I was better off with him, without him. But I did not care because I knew he would protect me and he would never mess with me in a bad way. From what I was told by my family, his mother or his aunts, my family all told me he really loved me and he missed me, especially because I was but my mother still insisted there was no reason for me to see him. It did not matter to me who he was or what he did. He was still my daddy, and I needed him because I knew my dad would get that man for doing what he did to me. After I got through that ordeal, we continued to stay in their apartment. Then not too long after the trial, my mom met another man, which I think she was dating the whole time we were back, back and going back and forth to court, and is using church as an excuse to leave the house and be with this man. But this man named Fred, my mother met, who eventually became her second husband and the father of her two boys, who's supposed to be a former police officer and a, pre and a preacher, a bishop of a church. Fred was not the man I thought he would be, and he was not a father figure in my eyes. This man also turned my mother into a minister and she became a reverend of his church organization. At first, Fred seemed like an okay guy until time went on. And I really got to know him which did not take very long. By this time, I was about 13 years old and I felt my mom loved and cared about him even more than before, especially because he was not my sister's father. He was not mine and he supposedly had money. My mother was always with this guy. I started seeing the same pattern that happened with the first man happen again with the second man. But me still being a child, I had to deal with it because I had no say in anything or did not have the right to say anything. The longer she stayed with the guy, the closer she became to him, to where she started sending me over to his house to cook and clean for him on weekends while she took care of other things. You're probably wondering why a 13-year-old child was cooking and cleaning for her mother's boyfriend when she should do that herself. But again, me not knowing any better and thinking to myself that everything was fine. I really thought nothing of it. After a few visits to his house, I thought maybe he was a nice guy and that my mom finally found the right guy, right? Wrong. The next time I went to his house was the last time I ever wanted to go back because it happened to me again. Yes, this man raped me also, just like the first husband. The way Fred approached me was by telling me he knew what took place to me before with Greg and said that was wrong what he did to you because he wasn't being a fatherly figure, but that this is how a father's supposed to treat his daughter. Fred even said that my mom agreed this time and that it was okay for him to do this to me. Mind you, I was such an idiotic and very naive young lady, and I really thought that my mother really approved of, maybe really approved of this. This happened to me before, and she really didn't make a big deal out of it like I thought she would, so maybe I deserved it, and she did give him the okay. So after the time, after the time, first time he finished his business, I ran home wondering what I, what I was gonna do this time. I thought, should I tell my mom? Was she gonna believe me or not? Because it happened once, maybe it cannot happen again. And if I told the cops again, they also probably would think I was lying. And I was also making up, making all this up, especially since Fred was a former cop, so I was told. I was feeling like there was something wrong with me because this was not supposed to happen twice with two different men that my mom was with and supposedly loved them and they loved her, so I thought. At that point, I started thinking whether this time I let him on or maybe I wore the wrong type of clothes or said something wrong that made him want to do this to me. I also started thinking, why all my mother's men were approaching me? What was wrong with her? Or what was wrong with me? 
And why was she constantly choosing the wrong men? If only my dad was here, none of this would have happened and I would finally be safe. Um, first of all, that was a great read. Um, Thank you. Let, I'm, I'm going to say more, uh, but let me, I'm going to go over to some of the other people in the room. I'm going to start with um, I'm going to start with uh, Carolyn. Carolyn, what do you think about uh, Morgan's read? Oh, I, I enjoyed her read. Um, what it had a sense of intrigue in it for me. I always try to figure out the movie or the story as I began. Um, you know, as I've said in the past, each person read should evoke some type of emotion in you, you know, um, and that invoked, uh, you know, a sense of where you're just disgusted with people for taking advantage of other people. That's the emotion that invoked in me tonight, you know, and it's one of those shake your head moments where you're just minding your own business, doing what you're told and people just take advantage of you. But the read itself, it flowed very, very well. Um, she kept us interested, that's for sure. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you for sharing. Thank you, I appreciate thank it. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. Good deal, good deal. Let me go to, um, you know, I wanna go to Jacqueline, back to Jacqueline for a second. Jacqueline, what do you think about uh, Morgan Tree? I thought it was captivating. Um, uh, it, it definitely caught my attention in the beginning. Um, her story um, is a mirror to a lot of a lot of uh, people's story. Um, and um, yeah, I just want to let you know, God is covering you and continues to cover you. And um, you already know it ain't your fault. But if you don't know, you know now it's not your fault. But from what it looks like, the book is going towards. It seems, you know, to me, you know, I'm going to state my opinion. You could tell me if I'm right or wrong, but I just feel like it was a setup. Um, and a lot of times mothers do that to their daughters um, in order to keep men in their life. Um, and I really hope that that's not what happened. But the way that the book is going towards, to me, it seems like that was the case. And I just, I thank you so much for your story. Um, like Miss Laquita always say, it's always somebody on the other end of your story that can relate. So, you know, just by you letting your story out, it's people out here like me, people out here like a lot of us on here right now, or that's probably going to do the replay and listen to this, that have been through similar things like that. So I just applaud you for your transparency. I applaud you for your courage and your strength to be able to endure that and, and to be able to come out, you know, kicking and screaming and fighting and, and still holding your ground and, and being the strong woman that you are. So God bless you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Um, you actually were right. She did on to him, hold on to both of them. And um, actually after my book came out and uh, she finally, I wasn't gonna give it to her cause I was told not to give it to her. And she actually admitted, she was like, it wasn't nothing personal, it was business. Mm. Um, so that's the level of this book of forgiveness. You know, he's still my mom, he's still my dad. They're the reason why I'm still on this earth and I have my own family to say that they're mine. I'm, I'm actually blessed and honored to say I have my own generation now. I have grandkids. So yeah, that was that was basically the whole what happened to me. Nobody did anything that didn't do anything about it. So I'm gonna let it happen to you. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I knew that's why I said I said I could tell how this going. That's how you know people done mm -hmm. been through it. You mm -hmm. know, when you've been through it and you walk through that uh valley of the shadow of death, you feel no evil. But yes. now with you. You know what I'm saying? That right, that staff, they comfort you and they prepare that table for you in the presence of your enemies. Mm -hmm. So God will sometimes take what the enemy used for bad and turn it into your good. And your test is always going to be your testimony. Your trial is always going to be your, your um, success story. So, you know, I applaud you. And once again, you are remarkable. You are wonderful. And you are uh, wonderfully made in Jesus' name. And that's why you are here now for people who have been through that, who are scared to tell their story because of what other people going to think. And a lot of times we don't get that confirmation, but we know 
what's going on and and for your mother to be able to come out and tell you that you know is is remarkable too and people be like well jackie why you say it's remarkable it's remarkable because it took for you to have the courage to write it for her to give you that confirmation that she did that to you and like like your uh, person said that's therapy that's therapy for you yeah. so now you can let it go and leave it at the altar and walk away from it walk away from it stronger so god bless you thank you let me jump to uh carol carol thank you jacqueline uh let me jump to caroline caroline are you there what do you think about um uh, uh, morgan's reed it was a really powerful piece i put in the in the chat that you know sadly so many young boys and girls are, are going through these every day and um you know, it just breaks your heart for all these children who are powerless in these situations. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. And let me, I got to go to one other person. Um, uh, Laquita, I saw you jump out. What What do you think about a read? Um, you know, I, I agree, Morgan, I agree with what everybody just said. Um, I just wanted to say to say to you, um, thank you so much for having the strength and the courage to share your story. Um, there is power in your story. And I believe, I, I sincerely believe within all of my heart that there is somebody waiting on the other side of your story so that they can start the healing process. They don't know that they can get to where you are. And your story is powerful. And uh, unfortunately, there are so many of our children who go through this every single day and some of them don't get to where you are. Some of them don't, they don't, they don't get there. They take their lives before they can get there. There is nobody to run to, nobody to talk to. And the, and the people who are charged to take care of us and to love us are the ones who are doing the damage. So I, I say, continue to tell your story every avenue that you can tell your story, every platform that you have the opportunity to share your story, share it. If you have to create a platform to share your story, do that. Share your story because somebody needs to hear it. Uh, I am so, so very proud of you and for your bravery. And, and I say thank you for sharing. And, and, and I, I want to say this too, sometimes there are things that go on in our lives and we don't share those things. We don't tell our stories because we don't want to offend somebody or we don't want to upset mama. We don't want to upset daddy. We don't, uh, don't want to upset people. But we're the ones walking around with all of this pain and all of this stuff on the inside of us when they go to bed at night. Yeah. So that share your story <laughs> Right. I, I, I love that. Share your story. Continue to share your story. And that's for anybody in the room that's listening. That's for anybody that's going to listen to the replay. Whether you've written your story or not, whether you choose to write your story and publish your story, that doesn't matter. Share your story and free yourself from the burden and the pain that you carry that manifests itself into mental health, into sickness, into diseases. Free yourself, tell your story, there's power in it. So Morgan, I, I it's a powerful read. Listen, Indy, I'm gonna be buying books tonight. See, y'all, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, first Olivia's book. Now mm -hmm. I got to go and buy Morgan's book. Listen, everybody on here need to be buying books tonight. <laughs> they make great Christmas presents. Books are something that you can read yeah. and you can gift it. You can share it. So purchase books. Y'all don't go to don't don't go to Chick-fil-A this week. Okay. <laughs> Take Chick-fil-A buy some books. I'm just saying if you can't afford the hard copy buy the ebook by yes, the mm -hmm. by the, the you know, just just support and buy. It's a lot that goes into it, y'all. I'm so I'm I'm just serious. And I buy books for Christmas. So y'all make it good. And let me know if y'all, I'm just, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm going to have to hop off soon, but I will be listening to the replay. And I'm buying books. So if y'all want me to buy y'all. Thank you, Olivia. Actually, that was that little girl. Um, believe it or not, uh, I have a sister who has who's special needs. And we're five years apart. And so I basically have had to take care of her since I was like seven or eight years old. I'm actually mm -hmm. her guardian now. She lives in a group home in, um, in Philly. So I've always been the person to take care of of all my siblings, including my mom, um, mm. so I've always been in place in the role of being 
a parent before I was a, supposed to be a parent. Uh, I had my first child at 14. Mm. I, I lost that baby, uh, stillborn. And then I had my oldest at 16. So I've always been placed in a role to be an adult. Mm -hmm. And actually this year was my first time ever actually taking a trip outside of up north and down south, <laughs> believe it or not. Mm. And I went to Mexico and um, I went with a cousin of mine and you know, the devil gets busy. And she, she actually brought it to my attention. She said, you realize you raised your kids as a kid? I said, no, I didn't. I was grown. I was 16. I was on my own at 16. What are you talking about? And she said, no. She said, 16 years old is not grown. You were still a kid. She mm. said, raise your children. When you were you were raising yourself, you, were, you and your kids grew up together because mm. you had them at such a young age. And I never, it never hit me until when she said that. And I was like, really? Oh, okay. Well, I never thought about that. So yeah, because yeah. you've always felt that you were an adult, right? You're not even thinking about your childhood because you're having to take care of this one to take care of that one. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you're being taken advantage of and, yeah. and being you you know, sexually assaulted. Yeah. When you say go outside, outside meant I took, I had to take my sister with me all the time. And at that mm -hmm. time we lived in a, a, a two story apartment. So I had mm -hmm. to take, take the wheelchair down then take her down and then, you know, spend... and that's a lot if you've ever been a caregiver. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, even well, thank now, you. <laughs> thank God. Yeah. Again, it was it was a it was a great read, uh, Morgan. Absolutely great read. You weren't um, ready for that. <laughs> no, no. I, was, <laughs> I know you and I talked earlier. No, I wasn't. <clears throat> I'm going to say this very quickly because I know we need to go to the next author. But um, you know, you one of the things you talked about was critiquing your your performance. Um. The only recommendation I personally would give and is, uh, first of all, it was, it was great. Your voice is great. Um, I heard strength in your voice, which is a beautiful thing. Uh, I, that's what I heard. I heard strength. I heard, um, I heard overcoming in your voice. But from a, I guess from a technical standpoint, the only thing I would, I would possibly recommend is with the highs and the lows, take your time and breathe okay uh you don't you don't have to run through it but it's kind of like when you're telling the story and you make the pauses when you need to make the pause you speed up when you need to speed up uh but i would just practice on that and it's rooms like this um podcast anytime you like uh, uh i think it was laquita i don't know if it's laquita or, or olivia but anytime you get an opportunity to read i would um uh, but yeah just continue to work on that. Outside of that, I agree with what everybody said. You have a story that is going to touch a lot of lives. And um, definitely, if you, you know, the more you're able to get it out there, the more you're going to be able to help a lot of people. Um, but I think everybody in the room applauds you for your, your bravery, your courage, uh, your allowing yourself to be vulnerable in, a, in this public space. Uh, or any other public space. Uh, when you write a book, is it? And I, there was one th one last thing. I think Laquita made the comment about um, you have family members that won't want you to write the book because they don't want you to talk about daddy, too late, or stepdaddy, <laughs> or you know all that type. Of, and, and they're more concerned about being embarrassed right. about how it's going to make the family look, right? Instead of how you know uh, uh, the, the the little per private hell that you have had to endure. Um, and, and I, I went through that already since the book has came out. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I tell <laughs> again, I'm, I'm, you know, um, you know, being around that that age bracket. Um, <laughs> I, I, I tell people, you know, at this point, you speak your truth. Right. You know, if these things happened, and and this is something that, especially if this is something that is going to help you, definitely speak up. Definitely speak up. Um, because I'm sorry, I don't care what anybody else thinks. If I was traumatized, I'm not going to worry about you and how it's going to affect you because in that I'm telling, I'm getting this out of me. Right. So it, it's actually, it's actually selfish. So no, I, um, I applaud you. Uh, I commend you, I, you know, and, uh, anytime you want to come back, like I tell most people on the, like I tell everybody on the book slam, one I tell everybody you're only here, like they used to say in my church, you're only here a visitor here once. Right. After that, you're part of the family. 
So uh, anytime that you want to come back, um, please do. Uh, we'd love to, in, you know, hear you, hear you read more, encourage you. Uh, and that goes for everybody in the room. That goes for absolutely everybody in the room. What were you going to say? I appreciate that offer. I definitely would like to come back. Um, I really yeah. for uh, constructive criticism. Um, I, I, you guys, not going to be getting emotional because I'm a crybaby. So I'm going <laughs> to wait till fall. But um, I will tell y'all, a, a lot of people who actually finally read the book, who were actually family members who did not know, and people who know me always tell me, you don't look like nothing you've been through in your book. You don't act like nothing you've been through your, through your book. And what I'm everyone is all about God's grace. It's not me, it's him. Um, I, I truly believe that he's using me as his vessel to um, to share my journey to someone else who may need it because I didn't I didn't have that that support and back in when I was going through my journey, I want to be able to do that to someone else. I want to give someone else what wasn't given to me. And if that means I have to expose myself, then the exposure was was there from birth. You know, mm -hmm. they, I look at it like this: no one wanted me here from from the time I brought, was born into this world on nine seven seventy three, but look at me today on 12, 6, 12 20, 2022 at, at, at nine o'clock in the evening. I am still mm -hmm. alive, and I'm here for a reason. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly thank right. You. Thank you. Thank guys. you so much. Where can they get the book? Where can they um, get the book? You can purchase it on Amazon. Um, I'm still working on the other avenues, but it's on Amazon. It's on Kindle. Uh, so you can purchase it there. I'm trying to work on um, Barnes and Noble. So my, my nail tech keeps saying, books a million, books a million. I'm like, okay, give me a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so once God helps me get to the platform where I need to be to place it on other ones, that's my goal. I told you I wanted a screen too. So mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you guys, um, I don't know how nervous I was at first when I came on here to sort of hear all of y'all's feedback and it was positive and with um, feedback, positive feedback and um, advice, I'm going to move forward because I've been held holding back since I published it, which is two years ago. So no, mm -hmm. hold it back now. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and it's on Kindle. Good deal. Good deal. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. A great Have Book, so absolutely great book. But I'm gonna say, absolutely great. I, I, I heard your message earlier. <laughs> no worries, no worries, no worries, no worries. We want you to stay. We want you to stay. I'm Morgan Reese, inviting you to tune in weekly for some empowering, enlightening, and embracing conversations to kickstart your day on Good Morning Black People.